Winchester News Online. I'm Jennifer Clare Marchbank and here are the headlines. Serious concerns on campus as more and more students suffer from mental illness. It kind of feels like there's like a hole in my chest and then like sometimes I feel like my stomach is empty. The Bayesian Stoke Vikings dance their way to victory. And a special service to bless these dogs sets tails wagging. Charlie is everything in the world to me. He's my baby and I adore him and I would do anything for him. University is said to be the best time of your life, but worryingly a quarter of all students, including here in Winchester, have reported having a mental health problem of one type or another. But how easy or difficult is it to deal with this problem once it hits you? Victoria Quinn has a special report. My name is Charmony, I am 22 years old and I have suffered from depression and anxiety. One in four of us will experience a mental health problem at some point in our lives. Today is World Mental Health Day, which means events are taking place all over the world in recognition of the importance of this issue. I would actually say it started like about six or seven around that age. And it was kind of like mostly because of bullying. It kind of feels like there's like a hole in my chest and then like sometimes I feel like my stomach is empty. So it's not really a good feeling, but when I tend to feel like that, I just talk to family or friends. Sometimes I do lock myself in my room. Like I just don't want to talk to people. And then sometimes I'm just like really annoying. Like I'll just be like, hi, hi, how you doing? And like try to get you to talk to me so I just wouldn't think about anything. I'm gonna speak on like what helped me. I go to church and I pray a lot and that is something that has helped me to grow. It's almost like you have to shut out everybody's opinions and then have your own opinion on yourself. The amount of university dropouts due to depression or anxiety has tripled since 2010 and worryingly this statistic is steadily rising. At university, especially when somebody's come straight from um, you know, college, they've gone into university, it can feel very, very daunting because they, they might not know anyone, they don't want to fit in. Suddenly they'll have their, their timetable and it's all of these different, all of these different things they've got to do and, you know, and, and that, can, that can push the stress level up. Then of course, it might be their first time away from home. And suddenly they can, they can feel quite isolated, very anxious, their anxiety will go up and up. They don't say anything to anyone. My message out there to anyone who's struggling is go and get help because it is not a weakness to ask for help. It is actually a very courageous thing to ask for help. Mental Health Awareness Day is more than just another event in the calendar. It's a chance to make real change and to challenge the stigma surrounding those that suffer. Victoria Quinn, Winchester News Online, Winchester Wellbeing Centre. Radical changes could be coming to Winchester Roads as the City Council considers ways to ease congestion. The Winchester Movement Strategy will look at new road layouts, scrapping the one-way system and introducing more pedestrianised areas to solve our traffic problems. Our correspondent, Bethany Waring, has more. For many, driving through Winchester Town Centre isn't something to look forward to. Limited parking for the one-way system and congestion frustrate many visitors. Incidents like the M3 closure lead to standstills on the city roads and traffic contributes to the poor air quality. Winchester City Council, working with the County Council, is now looking at ways to ease congestion which could see the one-way network scrapped. We're not saying we're definitely going to close this road or change the one-way system. We could do, but we're not making any assumptions. We're going to consult people and see what they want. And with those suggestions, we can model them and we can say, OK, people are saying we should do this. If we do this, how would it look? Some, including environment campaigners, believe changes to the one-way system won't make a difference. But many locals hope this will help traffic flow in the city centre. It most probably would save a lot of congestion on, on a Friday, or the weekends are always absolutely chocker. It's the sheer volume of traffic on for a town, you just, you're not really going to hold it, it's 
It's a busy city, isn't it? So yeah. you don't really cure that route problem too much. The traffic would be less, I guess, maybe. Yeah. But I'd also suggest that the roads are wider, they would make it a bit wider. People can have their voices heard in the public consultation, which is set to begin later this month and end in November. This could be the first step to a major change on Winchester Road, but this isn't the first time it has been suggested. In 2014, City Council has backed calls for a review into the one-way system. Three years later, not much has changed. But with redevelopment schemes across the city, there may be more of a chance the movement strategy suggestions get put to public consultation this time around. Bethany Waring, Winchester News Online. Winchester City Council have applied for funding to help improve flood defences. Littleton Town is a specific focus due to heavy flooding in 2014. The council hopes to be approved by spring. Renee Shaw reports. Only three years ago, Hampshire suffered some of the worst rainfall it's seen in almost 200 years, when the River Itchen burst its banks, causing destruction and flooding across the city. I caught up with Paris Council Chairman Patrick Cunningham and local MP Steve Bryan at the Littleton Memorial Hall, where they and other council members appeared to talk about the plans. At the moment it's timed for March, April next year. Uh, clearly we've got to get through another winter before the plans come together on that. And then of course there's the major, major issue of the funding. This reinforced brick wall is just one of the flood defences included in the £900,000 scheme across the city. You know, this will be something bespoke for this part of Winchester. So the plan has always been to see whether there are infrastructure changes that we can make in order to channel that water away from people's homes and away from businesses in a safe way. When spring arrives, the hope is that everyone will be on board and that the funds will be approved ready for the end of 2018. I'm Renee Shaw, Winchester News Online. Students at Southampton University are taking part in the Greenpeace campaign against plastic bottles. This continues from last year as billions of bottles are used, but how many are recycled? Environment reporter Sam Delamore reports. Greenpeace is a non-governmental environmental organisation which defends the natural world and promotes peace. Lynn Brayshaw, a volunteer for Greenpeace, discusses the campaign against soft drink company Coca-Cola. So Greenpeace um, targets big companies um, and then if a big company changes their policy then smaller companies follow on. So the Coca-Cola campaign, lots of people go, oh, why Coca-Cola? Isn't Pepsi just as bad? But we just say, well, it's one of the biggest companies, and if Coca-Cola changes their policy, then hopefully other people will. And Coca-Cola's actually got worse because they have less deposit return schemes and they use less recycled content in their bottles than they used to. What we were asking people to do was fill in a postcard, then they had three suggested comments they could write or they could write their own. So people could just write, you know, stop using throwaway plastic or have a higher recycling content in your bottles, or people could write something more. Coca-Cola still continue to raise awareness on the importance of recycling. Will all their figures from last year change? Sam Delamore, Winchester News Online. Sensory Sundays is a new initiative in Eastleigh to promote the well-being of people with autism. Eastleigh Swan Centre have teamed up with National Autistic Society to provide a safe shopping experience on the last Sunday of every month. Paige Lampard reports. We may consider shopping a normal part of our lives, a necessity, or an opportunity to socialise. But for those who are on the autism spectrum, this ordinary task can be fraught with many challenges. Eastley Swan Centre has launched a new scheme to provide a safe and welcoming shopping experience for those on the autism spectrum. Sensory Sundays are run on the last Sunday of the month throughout the year and will see the centre turn off their music and intrusive lighting. Retailers in the centre will either lower theirs or turn them off altogether, as well as silencing alarming noises such as hand dryers and till beeps. Customer facing Swan Centre staff have undergone training with the National Autistic Society to help those understand the challenges that those on the autism spectrum face in a busy shopping centre. Rodri Mayer, a student who has Asperger's syndrome, spoke to us about how sensory difficulties affect him. I think um, just from my past experience of going to these places, I always had trouble making sense of the world around me. 
and when there's like lots to look at and lots to sort of take in it can be overwhelming so I think like sensory hours or hours where it's sort of fewer people quiet to stuff announcements like less sort of music on the intercom it just makes it easier um, for these people to just experience what everyone else takes for granted. Daniel Kitchen, the centre manager, said, we want to make shopping at the Swan Centre a pleasurable experience for all our shoppers and I hope that the introduction of sensory days will go some way to improve the experience for our customers with sensory issues and disabilities. Similar initiatives have also been implemented at View Cinema and Party Man World who will hold special sensory sessions and autism friendly screenings. A survey led by the National Autistic Society revealed that 64% of autistic people avoid shopping altogether as the backdrop of noises and lighting can be so overwhelming for them. But the support displayed by this shopping centre is a huge step in the right direction towards understanding and supporting those on the autism spectrum. This Sunday marks the end of an era as the round £1 coin will no longer be accepted. It's out with the old and in with the new, as the deadline for stores to stop accepting the old £1 coin approaches. The coin will go out of circulation October 15th, making way for the 12-sided coin released earlier this year. Businesses have undergone changes to adjust to the new rules, but residents don't feel the change has caused disruption. Fingers crossed, not yet. No, they work in the machines, no problem. The, the, the place where I thought I might most was down at the swimming baths, but no, it all been switched over. Even the arcade, actually, on holiday was uh, all good to go with new pound coins, so no. I it's keeping them in circulation, and then anything we've got left at the weekend, we'll gather up and take to the bank and, and swap out. And whereas if we were some sort of national business, then of course we'd have to worry everywhere. Um, so no, we... Um, it is just a question of of being ready, uh, paying attention and, and keeping a smart eye out once it's actually happened. The 200th anniversary of Jane Austen's death leads people to celebrate her legacy in different ways. Some express themselves in song, others are inspired to appreciate women. In a moment we'll be hearing how an orchestra and choir perform music in the way Joss Jane Austen would have heard it. But first, Lauren Hodgson reports from Lo Lou's News a poetry event for women. Winchester is not short of literary connections. Jane Austen may have died in the King's City, but new life is being brought into women's literature. At the Discovery Centre, women from across the country have been given a platform for their prose. A group called Loose Muse is aiming to change poetry from being so male-dominated. I found when I've gone along to open mics or poetry evenings, they tend to largely be dominated by the male poets. Um, and female poets um, often go, but they don't, they, they're put off by reading fr from reading their work. I book published writers each month, two of them, either a novelist or a poet, um, or sometimes two poets. They're all women. We all support each other. Um, the evening is warm, supportive. And I found people are more women are more than happy to come along and share their work, whereas they haven't been able to before, or this is just the ideal place for them to do so. The night was such a success, Jane Austen herself would be proud. Lauren Hodgson for Winchester News Online, Winchester. <laughs> People in Winchester are celebrating Jane Austen's 200th anniversary. To mark the occasion, local group The Madding Crowd gave a variety of performances inspired by the author's much-loved work. This event here, um, it's one of uh, lots of Jane Austen events I have been to. Um, they're obviously, they're doing lots of bits of music which would have been um, known to Jane, in fact some of them extremely well known to her and it's so good to think that actually um, we can sort of hear the music and probably sung and played exactly the same as Jane herself would have heard it.
when I spoke to the Madden crowd director to find out more behind this historical event. I'm Mike, I'm the musical director of the Madden crowd, so I, I have to prepare all the music for the group and um, arrange it today. Um, I think she, it's it, the relationship stories that, that she wrote are really um, everybody's common experience. Despite the fact of being 200 years since her death, her work, her life, her literature and her legacy still resonates with the public to this very day. This is Juliana Tosh for Winchester News Online. Hello, it's Juliana Tosh. Didn't that sound lovely? Now it's time for some sport. Over to Sam. Thanks, Jenny. Saturday night at ba in Basingstoke at the ice hockey saw a game of twists, turns and a dancing mascot. As Basingstoke Bison looked to improve on recent disappointment, they welcomed the London Raiders. The game was slow to start until the Bison were able to capitalise on multiple man advantages midway through the first period. They scored three goals in this time, arguably the pick of them going to the University of Winchester's own Thomas Carpool. The herd added a fourth in the second with this well-struck snapshot from captain Aaron Connolly. However, it was a quarter of the way through the third period that this game reached a true turning point as Raiders netminder Yun King pulled a muscle in attempting a save. Though he initially played on, King went down once again a few minutes later which resulted in this long delay. As Bud the Bison kept the crowd at bay, London were forced to put captain Tom Davis into unfamiliar kicks and territory as he assumed goalie duties for the remainder of the match. But rather than pressurise Davis in net, Bison showed mercy. Ultimately, Davis was out of his depth in the position, letting in three of the six shots he faced as Bison ran out 7-1 winners in a bizarre finish. Um, I'll be honest, I've been playing this game a long time, I've not seen it before. Uh and in football, Basingstoke Town were looking to secure their fifth home win of the season in the Evo Stick Southern Premier as they welcomed Banbury United to the Camro Stadium. With Basingstoke Town the second highest scorers in the league and Banbury United the third highest, the game promised to be an entertaining affair. It didn't quite live up to expectation, but the home fans would have been pleased with Sam Argent's introduction five minutes into his return to his hometown club, capitalising on Banbury goalkeeper Jack Harding's error. After Banbury created a few openings of their own, on the stroke of half-time it was their most dangerous player Tom Winters who scored his fifth goal of the season. But with quarter of an hour to go, Dragons midfielder Ashley Artwell came off the bench to score with his first touch, completing a lovely move at the far post. The goalkeeper would have been disappointed to have not dealt with the cross though. In the closing stages, Basingstoke settled the match as a contest, with the impressive Sam Smart, who caused havoc all day, getting his third assist when setting up Sam Argent for another goal. That rounded off a great day for the former Southampton youth player, who had only just re-signed for the club. He's got two goals today. And if you add him to little Sam Smart, it was certainly a, a good day for the Sams in uh, Basingstoke. I think we, we battled very hard. It wasn't pretty out there with a lot of a lot of long balls, but we battled hard and come away with a free one. So great result. That's all from me, Jenny. Thank you. Before we go, there has been an extraordinary event on campus involving dog collars and dogs. The university chaplain held a special service during which she blessed some of our favourite four-legged friends. Our reporter Julie Lee went along to see what this unusual celebration. Charlie is everything in the world to me. He's my baby and I adore him and I would do anything for him. Man's best friend gathered to be blessed Thursday when the chaplaincy at the University of Winchester arranged blessing of her animal companions. May this university always be a place in which compassion for all life is honoured. Hi, we gathered here by St Francis statue today. It was St Francis feast day yesterday and he's an inspiration to us all because he said you know, look at the sun, the moon, the creatures all around, our animal companions, 
and praise God for them. They are all by their lives praising God, just by being them. And um, here on campus, if staff want to bring their animal companions to work, their dogs, then as long as the people in the space they work agree, then they come to campus and share the space with us. So today, we recognize the, the warmth and the joy they bring to us and that they add something special to our life here. And so we're saying, bless you, our animal companions. Hear our humble prayer, O oh God, for our friends, the animals. After prayers, the animals are blessed. Lecturers and students were among people joining to get their animals blessed. I think the service is important because it is important to recognise that, you know, dogs do have a central part in your life. I've come because I've got a dog, basically, yeah, and, and uh, I didn't uh, realise that the university offered it sort of services of this kind. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just what I wanted to do, and I felt that it's just a lovely thing for a dog to be blessed. With that thought in mind, that's all for today. Thank you for watching Winchester News Online.